Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Travel and Tourism Podcast, my first season. My guest today worked for Club Med from 2013 to 2019, and her first season was in Club Med Sandpiper as a mini club geo. She later became a costume designer and also worked in Turks and Caicos and Punta Cana. Before Club Med, she studied art education at Belmont University in Nashville, Tennessee, where she is from. She was also an extra in various music videos filmed in Nashville, and I have to know what that was like, and yes, we are going to ask her all about it. After Club Med, she backpacked through Europe and also became a field recruiter for Club Med. Please help me welcome to the show, Lindsay Hamilton. Hey, Lindsay, how are you? Great. Thank you, Greg. How are you? Well, GH is interviewing LH, so all is well in the world. You are named after one of my favorite islands in the world. Did you know that? I did not. What yes, island would that be? Hamilton, because Hamilton Island is the big island you would fly into if you worked at Lindemann Island in Australia. Oh, good to know. Course, I'll have uh, to go there. The Aussies called that Hamo for short. So does anyone call you Lindsay Hamo? No. No? Okay. No. <laughs> Maybe if I go to Australia, they will. Uh, I, I think you'll probably be there because you, you like to backpack a lot, I see here. So yes. you visited uh, yes. quite the uh, number of countries. We did. Uh, after your, your time in Club Med. Are you ready to begin? Absolutely. Sitting comfortably? Yes. Thank okay. you. Let's get into a bit about, you know, because I work for a university too, right? Mm -hmm. So Belmont University in Nashville. You also had some very, you know, notable alumni that went through your school. Would you we mind did. telling the listeners who, who went through there? Yes, we had, well, there's a lot, but some that people would probably know the names, Brad Paisley, Trisha Yearwood, Vince Gill. Melinda Doolittle for anyone that was a fan of American Idol. Yeah, lots of lots of big names. It was a huge music school, so very well known for music artists. And being from Nashville, because we all think of that as, I guess, country and Western capital, yeah. is um, seeing, I guess, when you find out about that people are looking for extras in music videos, is it always, is this a nonstop thing where in the newspaper there's always an ad running looking for that? Or? <laughs> yes, kind of stumbled upon it. I I believe it was my freshman year of college. They were recruiting for a movie, actually, the movie Country Strong. They needed a whole stadium full of people to shoot like a concert scene. And so many people found out about it from Belmont that they ended up like a lot of the professors canceled classes that day because so many people said that they weren't going to be there for classes. So once we we did that one and then we kind of found out that people would post on Craigslist for if they needed extras for music videos. And once I heard about that, you know, you would see them pop up all the time. Okay. Yeah. Country strong. I think I came out mm -hmm. like 14 years ago. Gwyneth Paltrow. Yep. Tim, Tim, Tim McGraw. Tim McGraw. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Leighton, Leighton Meester. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You like that movie? Yeah. It was, it was, you know, even more fun just knowing that my friends and I were there. Are you able to spot yourself in there? No, no, no. Okay. I tried. <laughs> I right. tried. Okay. But... <laughs> Freeze frame. <Okay. laughs> yes. All right. This is so interesting because I, yeah. I don't get, I think you might be the only ex -geo from Nashville that I've uh, interviewed. And, uh, but now I think you live in Florida, correct? I do. Yes. Okay. Need, All right. So... Need to gravitate back towards warmer weather. Yeah. Don't blame you. Do not blame <laughs> you. As, as I said, I'm a uh, calling you from Montreal. So I'm very jealous of the people. Yes. A lot of my countrymen uh, fly down to your place uh, called the Snowbirds. So yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're very familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So we said that you worked for Club Med in 2013, but before before that, I believe, um, I, I guess we should talk about your partner in crime because I believe the idea <laughs> to apply was not your own, right? Correct. Yes. So- well, I was working as a gymnastics coach all through high school and college and met my best friend there, Chelsea Gibbons. So she ended up transferring to Belmont as well. And after we graduated, she was convinced that we were going to do something fun and adventurous and, you know, travel and move out of Nashville. So she just researched and found all these great ideas and you know, I just kind of was along for the ride. And one of those great ideas, thankfully, happened to be Club Med. So she said, here, here's this website, apply for this. I said, okay. You were at a package deal, if I understand, correct? Yes. Yep, absolutely. But what does that mean? 
I was very, very shy before Club Med. And so since this was Chelsea's idea, I was, you know, such a homebody that the idea of traveling somewhere without her was terrifying. So we told them from the beginning, you know, we're, we're applying together. So if you don't have a spot for both of us, unfortunately, you know, we're going to have to pass. Um, so, you know, take it or leave it. We come as a package deal. Were you shy or painfully shy? Painfully shy. Really? So <laughs> you're going much so. to the most like extroverted company. <laughs> uh, like, did you know about eating dinner three meals a day with guests? Was that? No. To- to- okay. <laughs> no, we did okay. not. Thankfully, we both started as mini clubs. So that did help a bit because we're eating with the kids. And I went to school to be a teacher and I worked with kids, you know, coaching gymnastics. So I was very comfortable in that setting. So that mm-hmm. helped ease me into the geo life. But no, we were we were quite culture shocked coming in. And even the very first day that we got there, our manager, you know, picks us up at reception and you know, said, you can go have dinner in the restaurant and we'll meet back in the bar afterwards. And we were so terrified that we ended up just going through a drive through fast food restaurant instead and eating in our rooms because we oh, were really? so scared. <laughs> okay. Oh, seriously. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I don't, I don't know what that means to go to the restaurant. Oh, so Where che- is the restaurant? <laughs> Chelsea was shy too? Not nearly as shy as I was, but I think we were both just kind of in shock and, you know, it was a whole new world. And we drove down to Sandpiper from Florida or from Tennessee. So, Oh, really? Yep. So we, we were some of the very few lucky geos that had a car. Okay. So that made I, bet, it easy. I bet that made you very popular too, right? Oh yes. On okay. days off. Very popular. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, what do you remember about arriving there? You're your first week uh, was it uh, oh a lot to, lot to take in? I think I, I think David Mayer was your first chief, right? I mean, you went. He through, was, like, yeah, David Mayer. Mm-hmm. Our first day was honestly probably one of the funniest experiences in our entire club med as a whole. Like I said, we drove down, and neither of us really knew what we were getting ourselves into. So we packed my car full, like to the top, packed so much stuff because we were moving from our apartments. So we just had a lot of stuff. We didn't know that geos travel light. (laughs) So we get to reception. They call the mini club manager to come and meet us. And she comes in and it was so nice. It was Cindy Albert and she was so great and was like, okay, I'll hop in the car with you and, you know, show you how to drive around to the back gate where the geo building is. And they're like, um, actually our car's pretty full. She was like, oh, it's fine. It's fine. I'm small. I'll squeeze in. Like, no, you, we physically, you can't open the doors or things will fall out kind of full. <laughs> so she just laughed and like, didn't believe it until she saw it walking out to my car, how it was just filled. So she had to walk back through the village and kind of give us directions on how to drive to the back gate. And we were mortified that that was our first experience with our manager, that she could not even fit in our car because it was so full of stuff. Yeah, I, th- I think I would have done the same <laughs> thing, you know, after 10 years of only being able to fly to villages. Yeah, that's why we traveled light, yeah. right? Yeah, yes, exactly. If I, if I knew I had a car and I was driving to the field, mm-hmm. I would have probably had a U-Haul behind me too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All the electronics. Okay. Yes. We were just so embarrassed, though. We had no idea. So it was quite the experience. And and then, you know, after that, not knowing where to go to the restaurant to eat. And we were like, is this is this really a good idea? What we have signed up for? Are we in over our heads? And <laughs> and then going to the bar afterwards and seeing everybody, you know, in their nighttime dress coat. We're like, why is everyone matching? This is so weird. And doing all the crazy signs, all knowing the dances, we just were so culture shocked. But, you know, after the initial shock wore off, like this looks like the most fun place. Like, I cannot wait to, you know, be one of those geos, like knowing all these dances and and wearing all these fun costumes and things. So the culture shock didn't last long. 
Well, it sounds like you you brought enough clothes for every theme night, <laughs> by uh, you know, the amount of luggage you had. You in would car. you would think so, <laughs> but <laughs> you forgot all white and all black. And... <laughs> but, yeah, you know, those are not things that we necessarily had in our wardrobe. So I think we had to go to Target just about every night that week to fulfill the dress code. <laughs> Okay, but, but they must don't they have a country western night in Sandpiper? So weren't you already equipped, <laughs> or no? No, if they would have, we would have been set for sure. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, roughly, how long were you there that first season? Was it a year, a year and a half? A year and a half. I did okay. three seasons. There. And in that time, yes, you had a night rental village. You had a junior tennis players tournament, age yes. eleven to thirteen, and Rick Springfield rented out the village. And I'm guessing. You probably didn't know who Rick Springfield was, correct? Oh, I knew Jesse's girl, but that was about it. You did? How do you know I that did. Song? Oh, I, I don't know. Okay. I'm... Did someone do a country version of it? Or <laughs> probably. <laughs> I'm sure they did I mean, somewhere. I mean, it's a great song. I'm not going to lie. It is. But yes. It's a, it's a banger, but uh, I wasn't sure. I'm sure it, it was in some movies or something oh, okay. that I had seen. <laughs> and um, hopefully he played that. He wasn't like, no, I'm not oh, playing yeah. any of my hits. Okay. <laughs> Here's yeah, something off he, my new album. No. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think that was what a lot of the geos were hoping for, but the rental village was for like 500 of his closest fans. So these were all Oh, really? Um yeah, these were all mostly women that were very very familiar with with all of his okay. <laughs> you know songs okay. so, yeah. so but they were they were okay with not hearing jesse's girl constantly. okay so was it but... was it 500 guys so his fan base yeah no. mostly, mostly <laughs> okay so yeah this so the story rings a bell so i'm i'm guessing was uh lance weinhardt there at the same lance time was you? there yes yes okay all right now and what we, you, yes so during rental villages you know we don't we're not doing our normal jobs and this particular rental village there were no kids. So mini club, you know, we were just kind of dispersed to help here and there. And I remember one day during this rental village, I saw a dad walking with these two kids towards the mini club. And I was so confused because we knew that there were no kids in this rental village. So I approached the, the gentleman. I was like, can I help you guys find something? And he was just looking for some games for his kids to play with. Since there was no mini club and no other kids, his children were quite bored. So I kind of helped him and, and whatnot. And, you know, showed them the rooms, showed them the mini club rooms, things that they could play with. Turns out he was one of the band members. So he brought his kids to watch him play. And he asked me afterwards, he was like, actually, I have a huge favor to ask you. Can you sit with my kids in the VIP section during our concerts, just so that they have an adult with them since I'll be on stage. Like, yeah, yeah, no, don't mind if I do. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the band members, I sat with his children in the VIP section during the concerts just to keep them company. Okay. When were, <laughs> was, was his regular fan base angry at you or jealous that you got to be in the VIP? <laughs> <laughs> they were probably very confused or I'm sure, thought I was I'm the sure nanny looked, or something. I'm, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure you look younger than them, I'm guessing. Or, yes, okay. Okay. yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, what what is the, I see something here called the fake geo wedding 14. What is that? Oh, geez. Yes. <laughs> so one of our, one of our seasons there, I don't even know whose idea it was, but someone came up with the idea to do this, you know, kind of pop-up event for the guest. And basically it was a, it was a fake wedding, but we kind of hyped it up all week that these two geos were going to be getting married at the gazebo there, you know, in Sandpiper. So it was two geos that, you know, kind of were very, very sociable. So a lot of the guests knew them and, you know, all, everybody got really excited about it, but what they didn't know is that it was all scripted. We had planted geos in the crowd as well. And just kind of all these, random things would happen during the the wedding so it was just a ridiculous hilarious event and everything that you could possibly think of to go wrong would go wrong and so the the guests that did attend caught on pretty quickly that it was all a joke 
but it was it was so fun and such a unique event that we did and i i think the geos had more fun with it than anything but it was hilarious and something very very different i i feel like Were any of the guests angry that there wasn't an actual wedding? <laughs> a few of them only because they had actually they got gifts like wedding gifts for the geos Oh which no. they they did not accept we we made sure to return those to the to the guests Well, that's but a that's a pretty nice nice guest come to think of it, yes right? Who doesn't oh absolutely know know the bride and groom at all and which didn't exist, but you know. right <laughs> so i think they were probably a little upset in the beginning but, but you know we didn't take their gifts by any means so i i think everyone kind of found it very hilarious once they realized that it was not real So you you guys had to return a lot of toaster ovens to Target. It sounds like, Yes. Yeah, okay, exactly. okay. <laughs> All right. So we're we're gonna skip around a bit, Lindsay, but Okay. we can always come back to whatever season, okay? Because Sure. I'm I'm interested in the next part. So you you finish up your stint at Sandpiper, and you want to take a bit of a break. You leave Club Med for a year to be a nanny Yep. because you met a family while you're working in Club Med, and they they asked you to be their nanny. Is that how it happened? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They did. They were pretty regular coming to Sandpiper and they had been for years and years. They they have two girls and they started coming there when the girls were very, very small. So working in mini club, my first season, I met them and then I switched to the teen club, my second season. So, and the, by then the girls were old enough to be a part of the teen club and So I, I, you know, was with them a lot while they were there and they would come a couple of times a year. So it was just one of those families that we became very close with and just kind of felt like our second family, like they really, truly did. And they, in the past, had XGOs as the girls' nannies. So when I, when they heard that I was going to be taking a break from Club Med, They were like, oh my gosh, this is perfect timing. We would love for you to come and move to New York and live with us and, and nanny for our girls. And it was just such a perfect transition for me to take a, a little step back and a little breather from Club Med, but still have a Club Med family to be with. So it was really great. Okay, question. Yes. I'm wondering, because you're from Nashville, Mm-hmm. okay, now you're going to New York City. So in the various Yes. <laughs> Netflix shows I watch, the girl from Nashville who goes to New York City to be a, nan a nanny invariably meets some prince from some unnamed foreign country in a department store. Did any of this happen? Oh, no, No? no. Okay. Okay, got Unfortunately, it. fortunately, that's just for movies, but I, I did drive up there and that was my first time experiencing the traffic of New York. And at one point I remember calling the parents and I was stuck in so much traffic and I you know, was hours later than I thought I was going to be arriving to their house. And I told the dad, I was like, would your girls be upset if I just leave my car here on the side of the road and get a tandem bicycle to take them places? Because I can't drive in New York. This is terrible. How do people live here? It was a very different experience from driving in Nashville. Where about in New York were you? Uh, we were in Long Island, but Okay. both of the parents worked in the city. Okay. Wow. Mm hmm And you spent, uh, so you all total, you spent a year with this, uh, with this family, correct? Just less than a year. I, Okay. I lived, I was there for a while and then moved to Tampa with some other XGOs for a little bit and then eventually returned back to Sandpiper. Okay. Yes. I was going to ask. So is, Chelsea behind your returning to Sandpiper? <laughs> At that point, I don't believe she was there yet. She ended up traveling far more and was more adventurous than I was. I, I was actually offered to go to China um, before leaving and Oh, nannying yes. for that family. Yes, <laughs> yes, so, yes. I forgot. Um, my bad. I forgot to yeah. ask you that part. So yeah. you were probably the one of the only geos in the world who turned down china <laughs> yes and this, and this would have been pretty historic because you, no one really is offered china after right their first season so right can you explain to our listeners why you turned it down oh just you know back to my very 
crippling shy and being a homebody, <laughs> it's like, wow, that's really, really far away. Like if I, if I need to go home to visit my family, uh, that's not just, you know, a hop and a skip away. Like that's, that's quite the travel. So it was just a little too far outside of my comfort zone. I, I grew up in Nashville and then had all these big plans to move away for college and ended up going to Belmont, which was 14 miles away from my parents' house. Oh, was so it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did not travel very far. I kept my circle very close. So even moving to Sandpiper was a big step for me and a step from Florida to China. It was one that was a little too big for me at that time in my life. <laughs> okay. So summer 2016, Yes. Find you back at Sandpiper. You're there for a year. And mm -hmm. you went from mini club to art center to costume designer. So Correct. I'm interested in the costume designer. I believe yeah. you learned how to sew from your grandmother because I, I wondered did. how you how you can go from mini club to costume designer. There's a lot of uh, talent and expertise you need. And you said you learned to sew from from grandma, right? Correct. And I was I was very young and my grandmother taught me how to sew and I did that a lot when I was little and and even through school I would make clothes for myself and make things for my friends and I didn't realize until I got to Club Med actually that most people don't know how to sew. I thought it was something that everybody knew how to do because I had always known how to do it and I didn't realize that you could have that as a job as well. So our very first night arriving in Sandpiper, they were just starting rehearsals for a new show. And the choreographer was, you know, very excited to have some new geos and, you know, got us on board pretty quickly. So of course I met the animation team and met the costume designer and was just blown away. Like you can, you can do this for a job. I had no idea. So I was very involved with the shows and when the costume designer that was there when I was in Sandpiper the first time, when she left, I took over for her and everyone kind of had the same reaction. They were like, wait, you do mini club. What do you mean? You, you want to be a costume designer? I was like, no, I can do this. I already know how to sew. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> and, everyone uh, was just as confused and I, I didn't so understand. You, but you didn't find it difficult really. It was quite a learning curve being having to sew for that many people. That was that was what took some getting used to and you know, having a time crunch and having to make costumes for however many geos are on stage, plus however many numbers they need costumes for. And on top of that, in Sandpiper, having to do mini club shows and costumes for all the kids in the mini club shows. So just having to sew at that quantity was something it took a little bit of time for me to get used to but I loved the challenge I love being able to create things and even now I I still sew you know on my own time and make things for myself and for gifts and things so something I really like to do so I enjoyed the challenge well here's another part of this story I like now I'm a dog guy but I also like cats <laughs> and I believe the statute of limitations yeah. has run out on feline stories so apparently you brought your cat with you and secretly this cat lived in the geo building for years right it did yes when okay. i was coming back when i was coming back the mini club manager at the time carlin just really kept asking me and was like okay like we really would love to have you back blah blah blah. at the time i had a cat i was like i just i can't leave my cat i don't know i don't know if i can leave her with leave him with anybody so I would have to bring him with me. And she was like, you know, I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. But when can you start? <laughs> so yes, I had a cat in the geo building for many years. And it was a very well kept secret. <laughs> yeah, I, I worked almost a year with someone in Cancun who had a small dog. No one told me. So everyone kept this, <laughs> took this secret to their grave. I only found yes. out a year, a year after I left. Like, and I thought I would have gladly have 
babysitting right. this dog, but no one told me. So bravo on them for not even <laughs> telling me. I never saw it. I'm how is mm-hmm. it possible that you didn't balk the dog and I didn't see this? But right. So I'm always impressed of geos that you know can sneak a pet in and no one finds it. Yeah, a dog would definitely be more difficult. Was, was, At least yeah, cats small are. Dog. Yeah, cats yeah. don't like yap yeah, like small dogs do, right? But, right, and they don't need to be you know taken outside for walks and things. We yeah. would let them walk around in the building a little bit, you know, during the middle of the day when no one was out and about. He would walk the halls a little but most of the time he was pretty chill and kept in the geo rooms no problem what's the cat's name <laughs> oliver fitzgerald but we called oh. him mr kitty <laughs> oh oliver fitzgerald okay yes a very regal fellow <laughs> okay <laughs> okay i have to ask what, what, how'd you come up with that name oh i don't even remember oh okay i think i think, oh, no, I I think a his story that you read or no okay. i think i think at the time his name from the shelter was Oliver, but okay. I really, I really liked the name Fitzgerald. I thought it was very classy and, you know, very great Gatsby. So okay. it's like, you know what? I just, I'm not going to change his name because, you know, what if he re- responds to Oliver already? So named, after, they, uh, named after Julia Fitzgerald, one of our guests. Uh, that exactly. Was on the show. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes. Now in 2017 in June, okay, mm-hmm. you go to Turks and Caicos. So after many, many years in a family village, <laughs> you get sent to an adult village. Your yes. chief of village is Francis Lacoste. However, I don't know how long you were there before Irma showed her face, uh, but uh, how much time yeah. did you actually, as I think it was June to September, right? Maybe you. Correct. Mm-hmm. And so what was it, what was Turks like for you? Amazing. It was absolutely incredible and still even to this day is my favorite place that I've ever been to on planet earth I love it so much it is such a special island and of course just stunning water but it was so fun and such a different pace to be in an adults only village and just the the vibe is completely different and I was so shocked by that you know you hear people talk about it but until you're there and experience it, it was unlike anything I had ever seen. And it was just absolutely magical until Irma hit, of course. <laughs> that time was magical too, but in a different way. Were you kept there while it passed over to you or were you evacuated? We were not evacuated. Of course, they, you know, they're not going to make us stay. If we wanted to leave, we had the option to leave, but a, a lot of us did stay and we, still even had, I think it was maybe 200 guests as well. So we had a lot of guests that had stayed. Um, A lot of guests did decide to leave early or, you know, postpone their trip, but we had a lot of people there. So a lot of the geos stayed, most of the geos stayed. They did move all of the geos to GM rooms. So that was really fun. And we had in our room, we had four geos and a cat, of course. That seems to be my theme. But in Turks and Caicos, <laughs> there are cats wandering the village. And we, you know, wanted to rescue one of the cats during this hurricane. Like, I didn't know what stray cats do during a hurricane. So we brought one into our room with us and let him uh, sleep in there, wait out the hurricane with us. And, but this was a, a wild cat, correct? Yes. Okay, yep. got it. He was now, not happy at first. Well, yeah, I was going to ask because when I when I was at Turks my first season, yeah, there was a bunch of them hanging around the scuba mm-hmm. shack, and yep. they were very smart because I always tried to feed it fish, and as hungry as they were, they would actually swat my hand <laughs> with their claws yes. to make me drop the fish, which was smart. <laughs> they wouldn't take it from my hand. So, yes, I, I this was one was... of the scuba cats. Okay, <laughs> this particular cat, his name was Dirty Wetsuit. Just... Dirty. Oh, okay. <laughs> By his coloring, so you, so yeah, I guess. Well, that... Yeah, and since he was hanging around the scuba, that that makes yeah, yeah that makes mm-hmm. sense. I can see. Yeah, that. <laughs> so Dirty Wetsuit was at first not happy about being in a room since mm-hmm. he is a stray cat, but at one point he was wanting to go out so bad, and we opened the door, and the wind, you know, was crazy, and the cat just kind of looked outside and then turned right back around and came back in, and he was <laughs> calm as could be ever since. He was like, yeah, actually, yeah. you know what? I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Now your entire time, I believe at Club Med, like for someone, I think I, I think once you told me you weren't that athletic, but 
you did learn circus. You did aerials, lira, yeah. Spanish web, silks, hammock, right? And yep. you even traveled to Washington, D.C. to perform with a we few did. other geos, right? What was that like? Oh, that was great. Chelsea was back by that point, my other half. So she was chief of circus at the time. And there was an organization that had been to Club Med and they were, you know, hosting this big event in Washington, D.C. So they reached out to uh, Mariana and asked if there were some geos that would want to come perform uh, at their big event. So Chelsea got to handpick who she wanted to go on this trip. And so being very lucky, best friend advantage and whatnot, I got to be one of the lucky few to go. So Mariana and Chelsea and myself and two other geos traveled to Washington, D.C. We performed several different aerial acts as well as some dances that we had been doing in Club Med shows as well. That was really, really special. And one of these, so for Lyra, you had to start mm -hmm. underwater with a scuba tank. Is that right? <laughs> yes. In one of our pool shows in Sandpiper. Okay. Um, it was a, a water show and I was the first act came out as a mermaid on the Lyra. But to, to really add that wow effect, we started underwater. I was in the pool underwater with a scuba tank as the guest came in to get to their seats. And the music would start and they would pull me up in the lira from the pool. So that was a nice shock to the guests. Like, oh my gosh, she's been there the whole time. We didn't even see her get in the pool. Like she's just been under the water. Hopefully it wasn't too cold for you. <laughs> it was, but yeah. you know, <laughs> you get used to it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, sadly, Ir Irma closes, you know, yeah. Turks and it you're did, yes. sent back to Sandpiper during mm -hmm. that renovation and you have I believe you're they need they need someone at mini club right so yes they all they always are, are very welcoming back to mini club so I jumped in to help with mini club just during the renovations for Turks so we were there for I believe four months or so while they were renovating Turks and Caicos. And then we got to go back to Turks to reopen the village. That's right. So in January of 2018, you go back. New chief there, Spencer Norman Girard is there. And then right. Francis Lacoste comes after. You are, but you're back to being a costume designer, correct? Yes, yes. Okay, so let's get into this story um, <laughs> about they, oh, they, they sent you to Miami for three days to shop for the new season. You came back with, six suitcases so let's take it from customs uh anyone yeah. i guess listening to this knows about turks and caicos customs so did they let you go freely in with your six suitcases oh gee i wish i i thought i was so clever packing empty suitcases all you know nesting dolls stacked inside of each other when i left to go to miami I was like, oh, this is brilliant and then i'll just fill up the suitcases and i already have them with me to bring them back well it, you know, was a little suspicious for me coming back into Turks and Caicos as a, you know, solo traveler with six suitcases. So customs obviously flagged me and I was also just terrified. I'm a terrible liar and was very organized in, in my shopping. And so I had a little baggie with all my receipts and they were threatening to confiscate all of my purchases. It was, I guess, breaking some kind of law that they said that they could arrest me for. Okay. The By this point, the tears are just flowing. And I was so scared. And, you know, being in the airport, I didn't have service or Wi-Fi or anything. So I had no way to contact anybody from Club Med. This is also happening at approximately... Um, 7 30 8 p.m and that night i needed to be backstage for our biggest show music factory so on top of the stress from customs i'm also just terrified that i'm gonna miss the show <laughs> so they ended up realizing i was from club med and and they sent someone outside they said somebody go get diesel uh, they knew he was outside from he was our club med transfer so 
Diesel comes in and talks to them and I had to pay them a thousand dollars for them to let me leave free and clear with all of my purchases. Diesel made sure to have a, a good laugh about that the whole way back to the village and I'm trying to calm myself down and stop crying before I get to the get to the village and get backstage to help everyone into their costumes. Oh boy. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I don't <laughs> I do not mean to laugh. I'm sorry, but I uh, yeah. I, oh, it's it's funny now. Okay. Yeah. Just... <laughs> yeah. Now. Yeah. Now. Now. Okay. It's mostly fabric you came back with. Like I'm trying to figure out why. Yeah, like, and what I the, what and, the fuss was, you know. Right. I think they they thought that I was bringing in a lot of stuff to resell, ah, and on the beach. Of, I guess I don't okay. know. <laughs> okay. And they, I did take a lot of the things out of the packages when I was repacking them into suitcases just to kind of save on space. They wanted to open one suitcase. And of course, the one suitcase that they opened happened to still have things in packages right there on top. So oh, it geez. it looked like I was, you know, buying things out of the country to bring back and sell cheaper or whatever than what they could offer it on the island. So they thought, you know, I was kind of skirting the system i was like i promise these walkie talkies are just for us to use backstage at club med for a show so i can you know talk to the the team in the sound booth i promise i'm not selling them to anybody so it took some convincing for sure but, but diesel, it was funny after. diesel saved the day right <laughs> diesel it's, saved the day like in the fast and the furious and All made night. fun of me ever since okay <laughs> <laughs> all right well, Sandpiper comes up again here. So after Turks, <laughs> you go yeah. back. You must love Sandpiper. I okay, love uh, Sandpiper. 20, 2018. So when you were at Sandpiper during a Turks renovation, you meet the mm -hmm. CDV Karim Fajer. So does does he want you back to Sandpiper? Yes. And he he requested it. He called and said, you know, Lindsay, we, we need we need you to come back. I was like, you know, I'm I was planning on staying in Turks, but you just can't say no to Kareem. He is just the most charismatic person. And, and he was such an incredible CDV that it was an, an honor, really, that, you know, he wants certain people to be on his team. And kind of backtracking a bit, when I came back to Sandpiper in 2016, I actually met my boyfriend there and, and we are still together to this day. So Justin Xline was part of the animation team as well. And he was really pivotal in working with sound and lights and training people as well for other villages and kind of getting new equipment for different villages and, and mainstreaming everything. So that was another big reason that Kareem wanted Justin and I to come back to Sandpiper to kind of help with this, this next project. Okay, but I don't know if there's a mistake on the PDF you sent me because it says set designer. Is that a typo? No, I came back as set design because uh, okay, we up. had. Uh, did your grandmother teach you how to make sets? Okay, <laughs> come on now, Lindsay. What's going on here? How did you? Learn no, how I'm to just. Do a, this? Okay. I, I think this one um, really came back to my Belmont, my art degree. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, really? Okay. So, so that you was just. just but you knew you could do it. Like, uh, yeah. this would be a horror show. Someone asked me to do sets. I'm like, what do you mean? I don't know what to do. No, but you're no, like, okay. To, to really um, bring this full circle, Chelsea Gibbons was the animation manager at the time when I came ah, back to see him. Okay. Now I'm starting to see. So, okay. Yes. <laughs> so she had asked me, she was, you know, she asked, do you think this is something that you could do? I believe that you could do this. No problem. Like you could, you know, paint things in your sleep. But is this something that you would feel comfortable coming back as? So to me, it was, you know, a new fun challenge. I just, I love to create things and I love all different areas of art. So absolutely, I would love to come back and, and have a new artistic challenge. And the costume designer that was there at the time, Camilla, is hands down one of the best costume designers I've ever met. And she was phenomenal. So it was really exciting to be able to have a new challenge as a set designer, but also to work so closely with such an incredible costume designer. 
Yes, but this uh, Chelsea Gibbons character sounds oh. <laughs> maybe more charismatic than Karim here because she. Yes. Like, yeah, you can do it. You can paint in your sleep. Boom. You yeah. Know, I, I probably would have believed her. I could do it too. You know? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but you I had believe, the skills. I can believe. I would believe anything Chelsea says. She's okay. <laughs> wise beyond her years. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> now here's an interesting story because you don't see this too often. You you or someone organizes a big country music festival. And only 30 people showed up. Yikes. <laughs> Everyone's nightmare. And right. Uncle Cracker, who, yeah, I didn't know prior to you mentioning, I didn't know who Uncle Cracker was. So I, <laughs> I know who Uncle Cracker is now, was kind of yes. like the M MC host, right? Uh, no, he was just one of the one of the many acts that were there. He was one of the headliners. Okay. And mm -hmm. I've been in this situation where usually in a winter village it's not the attendance or capacity is not so large so the geos are asked to watch the shows every night so Correct. i'm assuming someone asked all the geos to watch the shows <laughs> oh absolutely and okay. since this was our rental village it was you know nothing that we really had any control over as far as the guests showing up we were told that we had maxed out sandpiper capacity and that they had extra hotels as overflow. So we were expecting really tons and tons and tons of people to be there for this, for this big country music festival that they were hosting at Sandpiper. Um, that's, odd. So, you, that's odd. You can make that mistake. Like Sandpiper. Yes, remind, exactly. Remind, remind me again, <laughs> is like can hold how many GMs roughly 600, 800? Yeah. I, I was going to say about around 700 ish. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And not only was Sandpiper at capacity, the surrounding hotels were, okay. Interesting. Right. Interesting. So, uh, you know, on our end, they bought out the village. So, you know, it's, we don't really, I'm speaking from the animation side. I'm not sure yeah. on the reception side, but I would assume that they just block it as, you know, every room is being filled, but not necessarily the the list of people per room, you know? So we had no idea that there were so few people coming to this event until the event started and we just kept waiting and kept waiting wondering when people were going to start showing up like we were prepped we had so many meetings leading up to this event that it was just going to be wild and we were basically all supposed to be on crowd control so for for get, that hype get, get back, everyone. <laughs> for that kind of hype and then for there to be so few people to show up everyone was just kind of shocked so yes, at that point, they, the organizers of the event were requesting that all of the, all of the geos, please attend as many, if not all of the concerts as possible. We, they had concerts in several different locations around the village. So some were in the theater, some were at the adult pool, some were at the main pool. They had a big stage set up. So we just kind of hopped from one concert to the next, just trying to fill up space and make it look like there was a crowd worth playing for. Were there country music acts that you recognize? Like where? Oh, um, absolutely. Oh, okay. That's that's odd, right? That. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're not really sure what happened on their end, the organizers' side of it. Why there weren't more people there? Because the the set list was incredible. We were very excited to to even you know get to go to these concerts but for there to be so few guests we were up close and personal with these really big names so that was really special it was it was really incredible for always us. a silver Probably lining right <laughs> yeah that's yes. a silver lining so and this so this is your i believe your third trip to sandpiper you do made a december mm -hmm. and then punta cana is next with the Correct. Chiva Village, Pierre Jean Montagnier. So do you request to go to Punta or they need you there? Because I see now your mini club. Correct. They actually requested my boyfriend, Justin. So he was kind of heading up this team for, for Light and Sound Text to kind of be like the trainer for the villages for the North American zone. So they were requesting for him to go to Punta Cana and obviously offered for if I wanted to go there as well. And they gave me a choice between mini club or costume design. And I chose mini club. So that was by choice. Yes. Okay. You chose mini club and that's I a did. very big, big mini club village, right? Yes. 
Yes, I had I'd heard that it was Big Mini Club Village. I don't think I understood the scale until I got there. And they have that big Cirque du Soleil, is it Creaction, I think it's called? Uh, creative. Oh, mm -hmm. Creative. Okay, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yes. That, that And that was great because I had several friends from working in previous villages that were there. So there were, there was a probably a group of maybe 10 of us Americans that had all worked together before. And a lot of them were on the circus team there. So that was great that I had a group of people that I already knew because I don't think I understood how big this village was when I when I arrived. So it was nice to have a few comfort people. Okay, Lindsay, in all your time at Club Med, you know, from say 2013 to 2019, mm -hmm. is there anyone you enjoyed uh, working with? Anyone make an impression on you? Oh, so many people. Just in general, I feel like Club Med made me such a different person. And a big part of that was the GO team that I got to work with. But of course, there are always a few that are extra special. And even after Club Med, we had a group of XGOs that we would do Zoom calls with during the pandemic. And there were maybe 10, 12 different GOs. And the, you know, we still keep up with them. So Nico and Dorian and Carson, of course, Chelsea was there. Chelsea is a big part of my Club Med career, but also just, you know, a big part of my life. So She's always there. Cindy, my very first mini club manager, Taylor Ritchie, Teddy Tillman, Rivers and Shallon and Carol, Seppa. It just the I could go on and on. Just so many people that made such a huge impact on my time in Club Med and just my life in general. Yeah, I heard Rivers before. Why Rivers? Is this a nickname? <laughs> I, Who or what is Rivers? <laughs> I must know. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, that's just, that's her name. I think okay. her her first name is Carolyn, but from yeah. the time that I met her in Club Med, she always went by Rivers. That's such a cool name. It is a cool name. She's a cool person. So it was very fitting. Shout out Rivers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, do you ever find oh, and Big Dan, of course. Big Dan? Big Dan. Dan the man. Yes. Where, where did you meet him? He was in Sandpiper and could possibly be the longest geo resident of Sandpiper. He was there for. Well, a well wait a minute. <laughs> According to my notes, you went back a fourth time. So to, after Punta, you went back to mm -hmm. finish out your contract, right? So Correct. he was there even longer at Sandpiper than you? Yes. I believe he was there for maybe 10 years or close to it. Hello. Okay. I guess he wins. Yeah. Okay. Yes, he wins. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's a he's a sandpiper legend. Dan the man. Interesting. And after you left Club Med, I know you went to uh, you did a backpacking trip where yes. uh, through through Europe, right? Correct. So <laughs> that that was kind of why I went back to Sandpiper just to, you know, kind of finish out the season, but also Chelsea in her incredible, you know, adventure planning brought up this idea that that we do this backpacking trip through Europe and she was in Sandpiper at the time. So I went back to Sandpiper and worked for about a month and then we left from Sandpiper to start our, our big Europe trip. And even throughout our trip, we met up with several other geos throughout the way. So we had Carol started the trip with us and did a few countries. We met up with Carson kind of sporadically in, in the middle of our trip, just several geos throughout our trip in, in Europe. And it was really amazing. But we went to, we were in Scotland, we were in Amsterdam, Germany, Budapest, Rome, Naples, Greece. We, we did a pretty well-rounded trip and we literally did it backpacking. So we brought only a backpack with us and traveled for 30 days living out of our backpack. Can you please ask Chelsea if she'll agree to be my life coach? Because I feel right? like we all need a Chelsea in our lives. So, oh, absolutely. Uh, Chelsea, if you're listening and if there's any spots, <laughs> uh, I'd like to sign up or go on the wait list. She Thank is you. the most fun person and my forever and always travel buddy and, you know, just travel advisor. She'll, she'll call me or text me and be like, Lindsay, I have, 
I have an idea. It's kind of crazy. Whatever it is, just say yes. Just say yes. And you'll have the <laughs> best adventure of your life for sure. Oh, that's great. Right. We all need a Chelsea. <laughs> absolutely. I absolutely recommend a Chelsea for everybody. And since I guess after that trip and now that you have time to reflect, is there anything, is there one thing you miss about Club Med or three things? Like, is there any main, like the main, like you find yourself wistfully thinking like I do, like, ah, yeah. oh, I miss this. I miss that. Oh, all the time. It comes up so often, but I would say the biggest thing for me was the people. It was like I mentioned, I was so shy when I started Club Med and just a completely different person. So just meeting all these people just made me who I am today and and really brought me out of my shell and made me, I feel like the best version of myself after meeting all these people and being back in, you know, what I call the real world. Now you take, you kind of take it for granted how close you are with all these people, like just, you know, proximity wise, like if you want to go hang out with somebody in their, in their geo room, you know, just before the show, or, you know, you always have those close friends that are right there that you can always just go talk to somebody, go hang out with somebody. You have this built-in group of friends, this built-in family, and, and they're just right there. It's fantastic. But being in the real world, it's not that easy. You know, people are not as close proximity wise. So it's harder to maintain these friendships or, you know, make friends as an adult. Club Med really spoils you that way. You have built in friends for life. Yeah. Yeah. You may have 700 friends in your Facebook list, but mm -hmm. you, they're just, they're scattered all around the world. Right. right? Exactly. Yeah. But that was really great during the pandemic. Like I said, we would, we had this Zoom group that we would call each other once or twice a week. And just to have everybody going through this, you know, life changing experience of, every, you know, everyone is all of a sudden just stuck at home. So to have this group of people that we would just still, you know, talk to about our daily lives and we made up games, we did all kinds of things, but to have this, I don't know, support group, I guess it was so always so special. I still talk to this group of people all the time, but especially during that time of our lives, I think was so great for all of us. You also didn't really leave Club Med after you left because as I mentioned in your intro, right, you became a, a field recruiter. So how, how yeah. does one, how does one become a field recruiter for Club Med? Oh, I'm sure you'll be surprised to hear this, but oh, Chelsea because of Gibbons? Chelsea. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Darn it. I should have known the answer. I know. It came out of my mouth. I said, oh, probably <laughs> Chelsea. <laughs> yes. So she kind of took over after leaving Village Life and was still in Sandpiper, but working with recruitment and, and with my own office and whatnot to recruit new GOs and having the use of field recruiters is such a great asset, I believe, because Club Med is so different and it's kind of hard to explain to somebody. So it, having field recruiters be able to tell you, you know, a day in the life of what, what exactly you're going to be walking into. It's like I mentioned, you know, we were very culture shocked when we started Club Med. Um, and so there were several of us that were field recruiters and we would recruit specifically for positions that we held in Club Med. So I did a lot of Skype and Zoom interviews for potential mini club geos, for costume designers, for set designers, um, positions that I was very familiar with so that I could properly, you know, give them an idea of what their life would be like joining Club Med. So cool. Awesome. You know what? We have time for another story. I'd like to know, going back to your first season in 2013, Sandpiper, can you tell me about the Make-A-Wish fundraisers? Yes, that was such a fun event and so fun. We actually did it again in another time that I was in Sandpiper. But the first one, it was a fundraiser that we did a 24-hour walkathon. So people in the village would, you know, sign up and donate or they would, they could sponsor somebody as well. So 
if there were guests that didn't necessarily want to participate, they could, you know, sponsor another guest or sponsor a geo and everyone could sign up in 15 minute time blocks. So we had to, you know, keep it going for a full 24 hours. We had a path marked through the village and had a big kickoff when it first started. And and then again, when it ended, but it was to raise money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And it was so great. And, you know, of course, for the GOs, if there were any random time slots that weren't filled, we filled in those time slots. So myself and two other mini club people and one sailing guy all had time slots back to back. So each 15 minute time slot. So we all just four walked together and it was at 2.15 in the morning. (laughs) Oh, really? Because that okay. was not a very desirable so, time slot, I suppose. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Rehearsal is just <laughs> ending. Ha <laughs> ha. Just kidding. Just kidding. Right. Oh, right. You know, I love my I, late rehearsals. <laughs> I know. I'm I'm sure. I'm sure we just stayed up until it was our time slot to walk. Instead yeah. Of um, yeah. Attempting to now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but it was it was so fun and it's so exciting. And, you know, people were constantly walking and they had the big board of all the time slots. So you could, you know, keep track of you know, who's walking at this time, like cheering them on. And, and it was really, really fun. And, you know, for the four of us geos to be walking the village for an hour at 2.15 in the morning, just so random, but it was obviously for a great cause. We had such a good time doing it that in 2017, we ended up bringing this fundraiser back. But with a twist, we did a swim-a-thon so we hosted it at the lap pool and had one section of the pool designated just for this fundraiser. And someone had to be swimming the entire time. So Chelsea Gibbons and I were hosting it. So we had a table set up right there at the lap pool. And anytime, you know, someone didn't sign up for a time slot or if someone forgot and didn't show up for their time slot, we would alternate jumping in the pool to make sure that someone was swimming in the pool no matter what every time slot for 24 hours <laughs> you guys were hosting and swimming yes awesome yes we had a great time <laughs> and there, i guess i assume there's music blaring the whole time oh yeah okay. yeah we we kept ourselves very entertained we had a great group of geos that would you know jump in every once in a while as well we did crazy signs at the pool we we had a blast did the cat even come out? Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> I wish. Good idea for the next one. Yeah, yeah. All right, Lindsay, we are at the end of our hour together. So I do really want to thank you for coming on and taking the time out of your day to come share your story with us here today. It was very kind of you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. It was such an honor to have the opportunity to be one of your many guests. I love your podcast and I love hearing so many people different geos perspectives on this you know kind of shared experience that we all have so i'm just happy i get to be a part of it yeah and unbeknown to me you were kind of like championing my podcast because you had the the tab (laughs) open and you'd be like oh you send a link to someone hey you're you're mentioned here hey exactly mentioned here so thank you for that because i had no idea you or anyone was doing that so thanks oh of Uh, course absolutely i have have no idea who listens to you (laughs) I Probably putting... more people than you think. Okay, good. I hope so. I, I I keep putting it out there and we'll continue to do so. So, but it was well, nice. Well, at the very least, I love it. You, so to hear you I'm, say that. I'm <laughs> always there listening. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> well, everyone, that was amazing. Lindsay Hamilton, and we will see you all next week. For another installment of my first season. Now say goodbye to everyone listening, Lindsay. Goodbye, everybody. Or I guess rather in very club med terms, it's not goodbye. It's I'll see you later. But thank you so much for listening. Well said. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Bye, everyone.